Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. We've been working away trying to upload more regularly and uh, this is what I've been up to lately just to show you quick. Got this old clock going again, got it all shined up and cleaned up. It's a pretty cool clock, local piece. And yeah, it was just pretty cool to get it going and it's working. So I've put up a couple of my old farm signs. If any of my subscribers have any old farm signs, like anything farm related, I got the Schneiders because that's my last name, but any farm related, that's off a dairy farm, feed, farm tires. I love all that stuff, so I thought I'd put the word out. But uh, anyways, the purpose of our video today is we're gonna be working on a Kubota tractor on the AC. My dad's tractor, the AC doesn't work and you know, they just deal with it. So I thought I'd just treat them and try and figure out what's wrong. Last year when I wasn't working, I had a little recharge, one of those little cans along in my truck with me cause I had a leak. And I thought, oh, I'll, I'll fire this up a bit and see. So I checked the pressure and the pressure was bang on perfect. The compressor just isn't engaging. So I found a little bit of corrosion, so we're gonna pop open the hood and see if we can fix it. I've uh, got the old Monarch up on a skid with some snowmobile dollies under it. I wanted to leave the original skid on it, so I just jacked it up there. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it, but at least we can move it around with the tractor and get it out of the way. But we snuck the Kubota in here just so it fits. He got my dad builds docks for a living, so he's got all of his stuff kind of stoved in here, we should say. But let's uh, get to popping open this hood. I'll set up the camera and get to diagnosing this AC. The button, everything works up in here on our heater controls. I can turn it on, nothing happens. So I think today will be the day that we're gonna get it going or at least diagnose it and start the video. Okay, so with the hood up, I just want to show you guys, this is just one of those cheapy air conditioning things. I know everybody says you're a hack if you carry, carry these along, but I keep one in my truck in case I'm in the middle of nowhere. It's 40 degrees Celsius out or 30 degrees or whatever and I get a leak. Leaks seem to happen with me with AC. I don't really have a good overall uh, knowledge or good luck with AC. But anyways, I can use this as a gauge. So you can see right there, we're in the yellow there. But the thing is, the tractor is off and your pressure is gonna be high on the low side anyways. It shows there's pressure in the system and you know, that's, that's what I want to see. I know that the clutch should try and engage there. If the sensors are good, you get your high pressure switch, your low pressure switch. So it should try and engage there because there is pressure in the system. It shows me that. I do have a big set of manifold gauges. That's just easier. So what I've done here is just pulled apart this wiring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to test for power. This should be this green wire right here brings power up through here and and then there's a sensor in there so that would be your high pressure sensor i believe because the pressure the sensor is right here and this is your high and then your low pressure will be right here so technically if i would jump power to this because it's ground the i looked at the wiring on the compressor switch right here i'll get you a light Let me get over there. So you can see this is our clutch coil right here. So you can see one wire right here just goes to a bolt right there. It's too hard to show right there. You can see that Phillips head right there. That's ground. So I know that that's grounded to the frame. So this is positive in here. I don't have a wiring diagram. And then it would go through this switch. You can see the wire goes in and then it comes out. It comes out this wire here which wraps around up here and across there. And what happens is it goes into there. So as long as, so if I would jump power to here while the tractor is running and the clutch starts, then I know that my high pressure switch is working okay. The low pressure switch, I'm not sure how it works, but to just jump power to it quick won't hurt a thing, so that's what we're gonna do. 
So let's just check this before I do anything else. This should be getting power from the cab. I did tear apart this wiring harness here quick, just the sheath off of it because it looked like somebody may have been in there and I thought maybe this suspicious activity could have achieved something, but there was nothing in there. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna check on this wire, which should feed power to here. So I got my test lead hooked up to the battery, to the negative. So I'm gonna turn on the tractor believe that the tractor should be running so I'm gonna start it up well and I'm gonna make sure that the AC lights on inside the tractor and we're gonna test for power AC lights on We got no power coming to it for call for it for calling ace for AC but if it was calling for AC without the tractor on I I can test this manually guys just to see if the clutch coil does work which it could be bad also but from our test if it's not getting power it shouldn't be engaging obviously so I've just hooked up my t my test my jumper leads. One's on the positive terminal of the of the uh, battery, and if I use this, this is live right now. I can just tap it to here. This should send power to the AC clutch, so we should hear a click if the AC clutch is working. Yep, I can actually see the clutch coming in and out right in there when I jump power. I'll try and show you guys actually. See that? So our clutch is working. That's good. I'll disconnect my jumper. So that means that our high pressure switch is working fine too because it's allowing power to go through it to the coil. So we got to figure out why there's no power on here. We know our pressure is good so we sh it should be allowing it should be allowing it to at least click on and then shut off if the pressure were to come down once it engages it should allow it to start up so we're gonna chase back where this wire goes and see how it gets power because i don't believe it uses relay there is green here but this is i believe this is for your start circuit for your solenoid for your fuel solenoid I'm gonna have to trace the wires and look. Okay, so I'm gonna start since we're not getting power to there, we know that. Right there is our AC fuse, seven and a half amp. And guys, it's fine. So we'll put that back in. So I think our next step is we're gonna have to go up top here and figure out how this gets power. I really wish I had a wiring diagram on this, but I don't. But obviously right here is my AC switch. Feels like a fairly hefty switch and that wire is pretty light. So I'm not sure if it does have a relay on it or not. I'm thinking that that switch just might control power to the, to the compressor clutch. The wiring is so small, so I'm thinking that's it. So I'm just trying to figure out where the wiring comes up. I assume in one of these tubes. We don't have a radio in this. It didn't have it when we bought it. So I'm just going to check in here, see if I can find a green wire in this loom going over there. And if we do, we're going to see if we have power, which I assume we have power on one side because when I turn on ignition, see how that light lights up? I assume there's power going to one switch. It's just... Even the switch could be bad and it's not coming out so we're just gonna try that all right guys so this access hole might be helping us so i got a green right here you see that green i'm wondering if that's the green that i'm getting down there should be but look at this see this 
I'm wondering if when this radio got tore out, if the wiring got caught on there. And if that's green and looking, sorry, this is hard to get in here. Okay. Looking there, I'm betting that this has something to do with it, with that green wire. But I'm going to run my test lead and test and see if this green wire here indeed does run down to down there. We're just going to put an ohm on it. Okay, we got one lead in there. So now let's hop up in here. I'm sorry guys, this camera work is horrible, but this tractor cab is definitely not the best cab to be in. I'm gonna tell you that for testing purposes. So try and get this on video. I hope you guys can bear with me. Oh, there's that's the antenna. Here we go. Is that yellow? Well, let's test to it in case. Nope. Didn't figure. Those are green. And we got no beep. So, must not go through. Alright guys, so with my theory being wrong there, you know, I'm just guessing. We're gonna put, go ahead and put that green back on. And now this yellow that was sitting there, that's off of that tab, we're gonna connect that because I have a feeling that could be a sensor right there. That could be a temperature sensor in our evaporator in there. So we're gonna connect that and see what happens. All right, our green and our yellow up there are both connected. Now, with, we're gonna turn, start up the tractor and see what we can find here. Actually, I'm gonna put my test light on that lead down there. Okay, I just looked in the cab and I knocked off that yellow wire when I was up in there trying to film for you guys with the camera when I was pulling my hand back out, I pulled it off. Okay, so round two, let's try this again. Right, guys well we got it i got a belt to tighten all it was in the end was that yellow wire off up in there in the cab 
I knew there was something like there should be 12 volts going to that coil. Like I said, I don't have a wiring diagram, but there should be, it should be coming from the cab. I know the switch has got power, so it should be sending it down, but it wasn't. So anyways, uh, the test light, I just, I don't know, it wouldn't make good connection in there, but now you could see when I was turning it on and off, we had power coming on and off. So that was super weird. I don't know if I just had a bad connection there, or the battery, I waggled it. We got AC working. That's sweet. So I'm going to try and tighten up this battery and we're going to send this thing back out of the shop. It's funny, my dad's in Mexico right now and I told him that I was working on the AC on his tractor and I asked him if he had a manual for it when I got to struggling there before and he didn't. But within about five minutes, he had emailed me a manual that he had digitally. He must have been hot last year. So you guys aren't going to believe this. On this loose belt, there is actually adjustment on this pulley. So you just break that loose with a 12 mil. And then I can turn this now and tighten up the pulley. So I should be able to get in here. Tighten it or loosen it? I think tighten. So now, as I tighten this, pulley should come our way. Should. Okay, so you got to crack a 14 mil bolt on that pulley and then you just loosen the jam nut on the end of this socket and then you just tighten with the 12 mil here. Feels pretty good. I'm just going to tighten down the pulley here. We'll start it up and see how that belt looks. I don't want to tighten it too much. She was tight on there. She did not want to break loose, I'll tell you that. And I probably loosened it off way too much. Anyways, there we go. Well, let's start her up and see how she looks. So since we're up and running, that AC clutch, as you can see, kept slipping. So what I've done is I pried apart the clutch there because you can guarantee it's going to be all rusty, as you can see from years of sitting, because I don't know when the last time this thing worked. At least it, I think the tractor was purchased in 2019 or so. And it's now 2023. So give or take, we're going to say three or four years. So what I'm going to do is get rid of that rust. I've wedged that sandpaper in there, and I'm just going to see that. That should clean up all that rust out of there. Let's see what happens. 